Your music release day has come and gone. The numbers spiked on day one, but then they started to dry up. All of that time, effort and money that's gone into your music and its release, and it's starting to feel like it's dying. So, can it be saved? Well, of course it can. In DKMBA, we are always saying your music doesn't die. It just stops being managed. So let's look at 10 ways that you can save your music release. Number one is micro content. And like it or not, micro content is the easiest and best way for you to get organic reach, for you to get your followers and other people outside of people who follow you to see your message. Now this means TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. Notice I didn't say or. It's not Instagram Reels or TikTok. If you are going to make a 15 second piece of content, why would you not put it across all three platforms, giving yourself the best opportunity to get seen by new people? Right now, there is a lot less creators than there are consumers when it comes to micro content, which means for the first time in a long time, if you are creating something, there are a lot more people that are likely to see it. So in order to bring your release back to life, I suggest three quality pieces of content every single day for the next month. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's a crazy amount of content, but it's not. We're talking about 10 to 15 seconds. A TikTok or Instagram reel is a very short amount of content. An Instagram story is a very short amount of content. So one TikTok or Instagram reel or YouTube shorts and two or more stories is really going to make a difference to starting to get people to see and hear you, your message and your music. Number two, use the song. I know this sounds absolutely ridiculous. But I wager that if you look at the last two weeks of your content, I reckon at least 50% or more of your content won't feature the song, possibly even 70 or 80%. I see this every single day where artists are promoting the song, but not using the song. They're saying, what can I create today in order to promote the song and not using it? It sounds ridiculous, but it's the most important rule. The song is the hard work. You've spent all of this time, effort, energy, and money in making the song. Now, the song comes first. What can we create around that song? This means you have to get creative, whether it's performances, whether it's stories, whether it's good pieces of content featuring the songs, whether it's collabs, whether it's duets, whether it's stitches. Your job is to say, what can I create today using this song? Number three is stop advertising. Now, bear with me. When I say stop advertising, I mean stop using your social media content, trying to get organic reach and just advertising. It is the kiss of death when you have a new single out to say, new singles out, and then tomorrow say, new singles out, and the next day, new singles out. Nobody cares. We are not bringing value. Your job is to create 90% of value in your content with 10% of a call to action, which means you are doing something that provides entertainment or value or performance that somebody watches and says, hey, this is really, really good. And then you say, by the way, this is where the song is. By the way, the song is out now. At which point you've provided enough trust, proof and value in the consumer that they listen and say, okay, now I trust you and now I'm gonna go and find the song or now I'm gonna do the thing that you want me to do. Artists are terrified of spamming their audience. So they say, I've made this song, I'll just leave it over there. No, no, no. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use that song every day, but we're gonna do it in a valuable way. We're not just gonna spam this idea of, I've done this thing, now I need you to go and listen to it. Because the value is all with me, the artist. I want you to listen. I want you to go to Spotify. I want you to go and watch the video on YouTube. And we've gotta flip this round. Where's the value to the other side? And if we can do that, that's when we'll build the numbers. Number four, start advertising. Now I know that's a bit of a contradiction, but what I mean is stop advertising in your socials to get organic reach but start advertising to start spreading the message. If you can provide enough value, you're providing enough proof and trust and passion in what you do. But the adverts is buying up the real estate to get the call to action. That's all an advert is. It's saying, I'm just gonna buy some space in front of you. But if they haven't got that proof beforehand, it means nothing. So we use all of the organics to get in front, to build that proof. Now the adverts is where we can buy space to do something that people will say, hey, this is really, really good. Or for people who know you, but might not have seen that you've got a new single out and you could retarget them and say, hey, 
Why not come across the new single? And they say, hey, I've been meaning to do that for a while. This is a nice, easy solution. Right now, there is an opportunity to get organic reach for free, but why risk it when you can put a small amount of money and get your message in front of the right people to bring them in and build them into your fan base? Guys, quick interruption. You're clearly releasing music and serious about getting results. So have you checked out DK Music Business Academy? It's got over 50 hours worth of courses, including the roadmap to 1 million streams course. What have you got to lose? Seven day free trial, links in the description. Let's crack on with the video. Number five, playlists are still there. Just because your music isn't brand spanking new out today, that doesn't mean that playlist curators aren't gonna be interested in your music. It might not be new today, but it's gonna be new to them at any point. And if a playlist curator likes your song and thinks this is the perfect fit for my playlist, there's no reason why they aren't gonna put it in. And that doesn't matter whether that's day one or after one year. So the question then becomes, how many playlist curators have you reached out to since the release? In fact, after that first week, have you stopped? Or do you know how to reach out to playlist curators? And do you know how to find those playlist curators? Obviously, all of that is in detail in DK Music Business Academy. There's courses on that if you are looking for something in depth. Number six, perform online or offline. It doesn't matter whether this is a TikTok live, an Instagram live, or you are physically going on tour or doing gigs in your town. This is how you can promote your music and get this in front of more people and turn the people who know who you are into fans of your voice and what you do. The good thing with live performances, you get rewarded, not only by people seeing you, but every platform will be pushing you out further outside of your reach if you use this feature. So this is not just an opportunity to build a bigger fan base, but you are actually doing yourself a favor by looking after the platforms who in return will look after you. So what if you can't perform for whatever reason? Well, why not go and find someone who can and bring them in to perform with you or for you? This is an easy trade. There are so many amazing singers or amazing performers that will trade their talent for your social media leverage. It's great leverage to be able to say, hey, you did the performing and I'll put you on my socials. That will carry a long way. And for everyone saying, yep, I did that, I released it and I did a performance. It's not enough. Do 10 performances. Do one every single day for the next 10 days. Go on live on TikTok, going live on Instagram, going live on YouTube, going live anywhere and everywhere to perform that track in a new environment, wearing new things with different people is another opportunity to take what you've made and add some visuals to it, making something new and interesting all over again. Number seven, radio. Now I know what you're thinking, it's not 1995. Radio is still a fantastic opportunity to get your music out there. And I'll let you into a little secret from someone who was a radio DJ for around two years promoting up and coming talent. We need you. As DJs, we really, really need people to come and perform the show. My show was three hours a night, four nights a week. So I was so bored of listening to my own voice or bored of listening to the same songs that when someone would say, do you want me to come and perform on your show? Do you want me to come and do an interview on, on your show? Do you want some new music for your show? Yes, 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 of course I do. Because that is more interesting things for me to listen to, more interesting things for me to talk about or to talk to someone with. A radio show is about filling time in the most interesting way. So if you've got a great story or a great song, why not ask? The worst that's gonna happen is they'll say no. And this goes for blogs, this goes for magazines, this goes for radio, this even goes for podcasts. You are dealing with people who every day think, oh God, what am I gonna do on the show today? And you pop up and say, I have a solution. Number eight, use your other songs. Whether you had a banger of a release last year, bring that song back and start to include it in your new release. Here's that track that everyone loved last year. By the way, I've got a new track out at the moment. Whether you perform both tracks or whether you just perform an old one and you say, by the way, new track out, you're providing that proof, that trust, that reminder of a track and a feeling that people had and saying, by the way, there's more of this to come. The best bit about this strategy is you don't need to perform both songs. You can perform an old song and then explain you have a new track out to build excitement. I mean, take a band like Coldplay. Imagine if Coldplay played one of their really, really good songs. Okay, bad example. Take the Foo Fighters. Imagine if the Foo Fighters played one of their really, really good songs, like Best of You, and then said, by the way, we've just released a new song. 
That would mean you get all of the excitement from Best of You. Oh, I love that track. If there's a new track out, I'm going to go and listen to it. Not only does that reignite someone's love for the Foo Fighters, but then it builds excitement. So this is about how you can build your own playlist and promote your own playlist. This is about libraries and not just one song. Number nine is collabs. And please do this because in a world of micro content and digital marketing, this is so easy and so effective. Ed Sheeran has just re-released a track with Bring Me The Horizon. Now what's brilliant about this is he's basically relaunched a track. He's re-recorded it, made it slightly different, which he didn't even need to do. He's added a new artist on it, making it extra exciting. And now he's opened up his music to a new audience. You've done all the hard work and it is so easy to take the stems of your music, take some of the vocals off and get someone else to sing on it allowing you to make more content, more videos, even have an extra track on Spotify should you want to, and get a whole new audience to hear and see you. And number 10 is one-to-ones. Just because your track has been released, it doesn't mean you can stop with the one-to-ones. And try this for a strategy. This doesn't matter whether you released it a week ago or a year ago. I want you to get on WhatsApp, Instagram, email, TikTok, and start messaging people that you feel confident with and just say, dude, have you heard my track? And they'll probably say yes or no. And at which point say, I need a favor. Can you go and build me a playlist on your own Spotify and just add my track with another bunch of bangers? And then say, and also if you wanted to be a massive favor, next time you go and do a TikTok or you make an Instagram reel, can you add this track to the background? It would mean the world to me and make a huge difference. Now, out of all the people you ask, 70% of people might forget. Some people might say no, which is the worst that's gonna happen. But if you don't ask, you don't get. And the golden rule here is a lot of people are prepared to help you if you ask. But when was the last time you actually asked? You see, I've titled this video how to save a release, but it isn't how to save a release. It's how to manage your music on a daily basis. It's what creativity and what work to actually invest in. That is how to get your music to carry on building, building that momentum so every release builds off the last one. And strategies like this, this is what we do every single day in DK Music Business Academy. So if you aren't in it, what are you doing? There's a link in the description below, seven day free trial, come and join me. Anyway, guys, Good luck with your releases. Let me know how these go. Give me some give me some love in the comments. Come and say hi. Otherwise, do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I will see you again soon.